areas of interest in the Pacific Ocean tonight on our Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. November 25th. Around the world of tropics right now, it stays quiet with no tropical cyclones active, although there are a few areas of interest starting to lurk across the Pacific, particularly out west. 89 storms have formed so far, tantalizingly close to the yearly average of 92. In the Atlantic, on day 178 of hurricane season, there is nothing here. Um, so don't keep looking because it is a dead basin at this point. Just six days until the end of hurricane season. Will we see any more cyclones? Not anytime soon it would seem. Eastern Pacific, or should I say the Central Pack, has one area of interest now to the southwest of the Hawaiian Islands. And that now has a 10% chance of developing as it moves towards the northwest. I know, shock horror, we have a tiny chance of seeing Hone in the next week. And in the Western Pacific, we've got these two areas of interest, both at 20%, one to the southwest of Guam, the other one about to track through the Micronesian Islands and both headed westwards towards the Philippines. Differing parts of the island chain will probably get these tropical waves. And no areas of interest now in the Indian Ocean. All quiet here after that uh, small disturbance moved through small in uh, strength but quite large in stature actually uh, into India in the last few days but that didn't materialize and nothing else is going to in the next five days. Satellite imagery looks like this across the Atlantic Ocean right now and you can see that it's very limited in terms of convection although there's quite a lot across the southern United States right now of course not associated with anything tropical uh, but certainly a rain event going on there which will transfer to wintry weather further north and down in the uh, eastern Pacific we've got just a few showers really and uh, one or two more uh, large-scale disturbances but in both basins it's dry air that dominates proceedings uh, and very little chance for systems to form. Western Pacific has a bit of a better chance. You can see, first of all, that little cyclonic shape that was passing south of Guam. That's a disturbance that's pushing along there, and it's sort of gone a bit more linear in the last few hours there. And to its east, that other wave behind it, which I think will have a higher chance of developing into something in the long term. Uh, models suggesting that if it doesn't strengthen before the Philippines, it probably will on the other side in the South China Sea. Indian Ocean looking like this. It's a little bit of... Uh, convective blow up off the west coast of India that might be associated with that disturbance we're watching in the last few days. Over Indonesia uh, a fairly unsettled monsoonal pattern going on there right now and watching along the west coast of Australia, the western Australian coast I should say, uh, some convection bubbling up to do with what was left of Invest 94S. Interesting to watch that as it may well materialise into a rain event there as well and a train there of moisture all across northern Australia. Sea surface temperatures are actually rising a little bit in the eastern Pacific. There's that little 30 degree splodge that's actually increased in size in the last few days off the coast of Mexico, but there's nothing to capitalize on it. In the Atlantic, there's still the large area there in the uh, Caribbean Sea and out towards the Bahamas, 28 degrees plus, still looking decent. Uh, but the more northerly reaches are really starting to close in on itself now. Those sea surface temperatures declining further north. Indian Ocean, the eastern side is uh, still warming a little bit, the western side now is cooling and in the southern hemisphere you can just about see it down there, uh, sea surface temperatures gradually increasing around 28 degrees in the tropical nursery zone. And in the western Pacific there, still looking at decent temperatures, 28 degrees or higher, that lower latitude cyclone has a better chance as temperatures are near 30 degrees there as it continues westwards, below 10 degrees north. And the sea surface temperature anomalies, they are quite a bit above average in the western Pacific there. It's the eastern Pacific that's still lagging behind, the La Nina is still quite prevalent. The Atlantic tropics is getting pretty neutral, but the subtropics remain quite a bit above average, although they are starting to fall away in real terms. 
And the oceanic heat content looks like this, and it really is starting to fizzle out a bit more now for the Caribbean Sea. Even uh, we had those deep dark red colours, and it's now a little less so, especially around Haiti and Jamaica. Eastern Pacific still has one or two little blue areas there, which, is, to be fair, is all that we saw this year anyway. And in the Western Pacific, there's still a few areas to hit there with some dark oranges to the west of Guam towards the Philippines. Short term GFS, this is out to the five day period and take a look what it has in store for the Central Pacific. You can see this little area of interest start to materialize towards the end of that five day period. And then GFS thinks that it might develop into a tropical cyclone there. Does it get its circulation in order? I'm not sure, but one or two little intervals there where it reaches uh, storm force winds. You'll see you get some greens when that actually happens. Right at the end, I think it did. And in the Western Pacific, you might be able to make out the two uh, rotations. I don't think you really see the Western one, but look out for the Eastern one now to the center of your screen, moving across the Southern part of the Western Pacific and venturing towards the Philippines and building up a little bit towards the end of that loop there as it passing Palau. But still, overall, there's not really much to see in the next few days in the Western Pacific. I don't think it will surprise us, although later on in that run, five days onwards, maybe then we'll be starting to look at something more uh, substantial. Nonetheless, it does carry a bit of a rain risk, of course, uh, both of these systems moving through. The northern wave, not really very much, but the southern one particularly. You see this big area of green starting to form in the next seven days and some of it turning into yellow and oranges as it reaches the Philippines. That's over five inches of rain, in fact, 10 inches there in a, a small part of southeastern Mindanao. That's 250 millimeters, half that further north, but still quite substantial. And looking out to some of the uh, islands, uh, Palau there, uh, I think that's Yap actually at four inches, that's 100 millimeters in Guam there, uh, much less and out towards Micronesia generally between two and four inches. So up to 100 millimeters for the islands, maybe a little bit more for the Philippines, depending what happens. Longer range then, uh, first of all, looking at the Central Pacific, watch that system. It's a small one as it passes to the west of the Hawaiian Islands, um, towards the northeast and really blows up and becomes an extra tropical cyclone quite quickly. Uh, GFS doesn't give it as much time as it did yesterday to become a significant cyclone and last a little bit longer. It's a very short-lived event there, so certainly very uh, uncertain as to whether that will be able to materialize or not in an only marginally favorable uh, environment. Western Pacific, what comes out of that system? Oh, there it is, developing just before it reaches Mindanao. Does it get a circulation going? I'm not sure there. But watch on the other side of the Philippines, through Palawan and out into the South China Sea, really develops there and becomes a typhoon as it approaches the coast of Vietnam. That is longer range, day 5 to 10, but certainly keep your guard up, even if the system doesn't initially develop, even up to 5 days or even more, it may just start developing later on, maybe even after landfall in the Philippines. And also looking down towards the Southwest Indian Ocean, do we have our first proper storm of the season? Well, the GFS thinks that there might be something that appears towards the end of this 10 day period. And there it is, a small cyclone that starts to intensify as it slowly labors towards Madagascar. Um, doesn't get hugely strong, might have a shot at Cyclone Category 1 status, um, but interesting to see that development in the medium range. And in Australia, there is also a potential for a tropical cyclone in the medium range. There it is, developing very quick spin up and off it goes. Doesn't last very long after it passes the Cape York Peninsula and uh, out into the Coral Sea where it dies off very quickly. We don't get to see any more on that Southwest Indian Ocean cyclone, so I'll tell you what happens. It peaks around that time and then it starts to weaken a little bit, grazes the northern tip of Madagascar and then moves westward and dies off. Uh, off out at sea to the east of Africa. Well, that's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items, including our full season individual storm animations and our still waiting for Hone t shirt. And there's no uh, silly range tonight, so let's go straight to our Hurricane Week teaser. It 
it's going to be epic as always. Well, let's take a look at what happened on this day in the world of storms. On November 25th, 2009, we had only one cyclone, but what a beast it was. It was Typhoon Nida, an extremely powerful sea-bound Category 5 Typhoon, which was, I think, peaking on this day, actually, um, as a very powerful storm. I can't remember the actual wind speed that our analysis goes with. It must be nearly 200 miles per hour and a pressure estimate in the lower 880s. A really impeccable appearance on that storm. I think the shrinked image there doesn't quite do its justice. So take a look at a full blown image if you want to see the real might of Typhoon Nida. And back to this year. Well, there's no sign of any new storms in sight properly just yet. Uh, certainly not in the Atlantic, but the next name, just in case, is Owen. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour, and in the Central Pacific, could it be Pone next up? In the Western Pacific, the next name is Pakar, and in the North Indian Ocean, we are still waiting for Mandus after the flop in the last few days in the Bay of Bengal. So far we've had 89 storms around the world, just three away from the annual average in the Australian region. The next name coming up is Darien, Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.